Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Sergio and Carol podcast. The best in the West. <laughs> We're actually in the central south. It's a joke, babe. It's a joke. You guys got it, right? <sighs> Just because it rhymes. Yes. So usually I know that people do a lot, you know, like a big introduction in the podcast, but we jump into right into the conversations here, right? Yeah. We don't um, necessarily have to introduce ourselves. We're already known. Ah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just ordinary kids doing our thing, you know, and sharing a little bit of love. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, you know what? <laughs> you know what? What draws my, catches my attention about you, my love? You're 32 years old, baby. Why are we saying my age? You never. Okay, let's go back. Retrack. <laughs> you are in your early 30s. <clears throat> early 20s. Just 30s, you know, is the new 20s. <laughs> and it continue. Yes. Now my age is exposed. <laughs> but we'll let you be the judge. Because my kids tell me every day, Miss, you look like you're 18. I'll uh, take it. I'll take it. <laughs> What I'm saying is, baby, in your 30s, you're no longer in your 20s or your teens, baby. You are now entering into midlife. You, crisis. Do you, do you understand? <laughs> a crisis? Yeah. Mid. I think I have to hit the crisis, right? <laughs> <laughs> about. About. Not yet. What I did <laughs> notice, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm in my late 30s. Oh, why don't we, why don't we specify? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, guess his age. <laughs> Okay, I am 37, and I'm proud of it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not ashamed of, of, of sharing that I didn't say you were ashamed, I was just saying, say the digit. What I am noticing that as I grow older, my, my habits and my, my likes and my preferences are changing, and my, even my, my, my hobbies are changing. But you're woman or not, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. My I woman, like my woman, it is not your, changing. Your my wife buds, is not changing. Your taste buds can change all they want, honey boo boo. But this woman right here is all you getting. You stuck with me forever. And one of those things is that I've gotten a, a an appreciation and a love for lawn caring. Oh, yes. So I've been taking care of my lawn. Oh, I, I, I know I where this is going. A, I, I, I posted a couple of uh, videos. Um, I enjoy it. It's actually a, a stress reliever for me. But the last project, it cost me more stress than it relieved me from stress. Sorry, I'm over here laughing because I just remembered what happened. Like you have to show, you should probably show the video clip in this video. The, the little, the bloomers. What are they called? The bloopers. The bloopers. Because <laughs> literally, that I, guys, when I tell you, we literally sat in those middle of the street laughing for 30 minutes so there is a video that you know the second video i i posted it was of me on the walker right because my, i had hurt my back my, my but he genuinely was in pain guys i was in pain yeah that, that's the, funny, I, that's I the part that i don't hurt, think people understand i did hurt my 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 disc uh-huh well, I've I've been struggling with the herniated pinch nerve disc for like 15 years now yeah and uh, whenever I feel good, I think that I can, you know, like lift stuff, you know, lift stuff and whatnot. So I worked for like three days nonstop on this yard and then finally kicked in and it hurt me, brought me to my knees. Mm -hmm. so, oh, wait, parentheses, a yard that I told him to have someone do because <laughs> specifically because <laughs> not because you couldn't, but because of your back. Right. Anyway, so we're making this video. I just love when I'm right. Continue. No, you're I'm gonna, not right. I'm going to enjoy it. Never. Oh, I have evidence that you literally admitted it to 85,000 people. <laughs> I'm good with that. I know. So look, so we're making this video, right? And all of a sudden, so I'm telling you, hey, I'm going to roll back in this walker. I went to Goodwill and I bought this walker. I wanted a wheelchair because I had this idea. So I go to Goodwill and I buy this this I walker. Can't you bought a walker. <laughs> At Goodwill. <laughs> so I'm rolling back. You should feel ashamed of yourself. Someone's going to walk into the store and they're literally going to need that. And that was someone who really needed it for that price. No. Return it. Donate it back. After I bought it, really? Yes. No. Then give it away to someone in need. <sighs> you're going to let me finish my story? Oh, you're saying you're going to use it for when you're 40? Uh, oh. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's go. Let's go. 
You know what, Carol? There will be a day. There will be a day. Anyway, um, so I'm 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 in I'm in my walker, I'm rolling back, and then Carol goes out and, and stops me and catches me and she says, like, hey, you're gonna fall. And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna fall. So on the second try, Carol goes there again and stops me because she thinks I'm gonna fall. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna fall. Like, like I did this. Already. I kept running. Like, I didn't know what you were doing at first. I kept running after you. But I so but I, I had done it before and and it, I just and I hit the street without you know anything. So on the third try, when she's not holding me, I when I hit the street, I fell and I fell hard, man. <laughs> like and it really, really hurt, yo. And the funniest part is that you were like not acting, like it wasn't part of it. Like you literally fell, and you fell on the actual one. Like you were trying oh my to make goodness. this the video. Oh my goodness! Anyway, it felt so hard, guys. Like <laughs> when you're watching your husband go down the driveway, and you know what's gonna happen, but you can't stop him, and he has to learn the hard way. And you know where the it's thing going. is that I had already done it and it didn't and didn't fold it. The 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 walker did not fold. The first two times I think I stopped you, and then the third time you got it. But I had done it before and it didn't fold. Hey guys, listen, I didn't even I think I waited for your permission to like are you are you still are you recording? Is this oh I think I told you. Is this like are you faking it? Was that part of the thing? Until I ran out there. Oh no, you called my name or what happened? And I just could not stop laughing. I had not laughed that hard in a while. <laughs> Guys, when I tell you, like, I wasn't even, like, I couldn't with myself. My stomach hurt. <laughs> it was so funny. It made my day. Anyway, long story short, I I finished with the lawn. What happened was that mm -hmm. last year I hired somebody to come and put brand, uh, new mulch. They changed the old mulch when we bought the house. They put a mulch, and throughout the year... When we bought the house throughout the year, there wasn't there wasn't any weeds or grass in the flower bed. Mm -hmm. Second year, I you know I hired this guy to come and put new mulch. He changes the mulch; it was more like dirt. And throughout the year, a bunch of grass and weeds would come out a lot, and it was really, really you know annoying. So what I did was I took out all the mulch out, which was a lot. It was a lot, and it was more even... than I expected. I think it was more like about fifteen wheelbarrows. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how many, but it was a lot. You took all the dirt. I mean, we have a pretty, you have to show them a picture of like how our front garden is. So then I got stuck garden. with it. I was, you know, filtering anyway. The, 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 I, I, in the middle of it, I was like, man, should I have hired somebody to do this or not? But you know what? You instantly regretted Be it. Admit. No, no, no. I thought about it. I was like, you know what? But I did regret at some point. But then all the people online were like, you can do it. You know, Aww, you're your a fans. man. Yeah. You got fans, babe. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you today that I finished that project. That's right. <laughs> there you there go. You go. There you go. <laughs> Honey, I was clapping for you too. Why was it hard for you to admit that I was right? Because I feel like at one point, your actions <laughs> were telling me all the answers. You know what, though? The thing is that, you know, these, these decisions are important. You know, at some point in history, there was a woman that raised her hand and was like, hey, I think that women should drive. And someone gave in and a man gave in. And look at us now. We have women driving on public roads because a man gave in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My love, you better rephrase that because you're about to like uh, get a lot of comments from women. Not very good. So Ladies, I couldn't he's, give he's, in. He's trying to say. I couldn't give in. I couldn't give in because. What, what he's trying to say is he just wanted <laughs> us to have that role because, you know, at times men can come across as they're big and strong and maybe women cannot do the same. That's that's what he's trying to say. I mean, are you happy about the fact that some women in some, you know, in history said, oh, women should be allowed to, to work? Are you happy about that? Listen. Um, to be honest, I do go back and say, you know, um, 
thanks to women's rights. <laughs> I am here, stuck, <laughs> working, <laughs> overly working. Um, and actually, I would I would like to be home and bake a cake for what for what it's worth. So whoever raised her hand, yeah, right, took that from me. Just took that from you. Yeah, you could have been a, a stay at home yeah, wife. Yeah, you could be taking Ideally. care of the kids. You could have been baking. Why cake. did you guys fight for woman rights? <laughs> we could be baking at home. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Uh, no, but you know, for what is worth, I finished the project, and it was a very fulfilling um, achievement for me. One thing that I have enjoyed. Or, or not enjoy, but I have tra slowly transition. I will say is, as I have grown older, I am now more comfortable with people. No, with me being misunderstood. Elaborate a little bit more on that. I am now, now that I'm older, I am now more comfortable and okay with being misunderstood. Like I'm not... I'm not going out of my way and fighting to explain myself so people can understand me right. Mm. If they arrive at the, at the wrong conclusion, I am no longer suffering or fighting my way so that they can, so that I can make sure that they have understood me correctly. Now, if a conversation arises and, and we get to talk about it, yeah. it's different. But if I, if I say something and automatically people come to a conclusion without having that conversation, I'm no longer going out of my way now that I'm older to explain myself. So in other words, you just stop caring what other people think. To a certain extent. And, and then specifically about you. To a certain extent. Again, I'm not going out there and saying and doing things recklessly. To provoke or make some, yeah, right. Right. This is more for your own self. But now I, I treasure more peace. Mm -hmm. I value more peace than, than going out there and be like, no, that's not what I meant. Let me explain to you what happened, and and so you can understand me. So this, you know what I mean. So do you think like you don't maybe you don't seek you don't need approval of others? Yeah. That's what I, would I feel say. like that's how it comes across. Like you just don't need people's approval, nor do you need their opinion. And if they give it after you've given your statement and it's not even relatable to what you said, or you feel like, nope, that's not what I said, or you don't feel understood, you're not going to sit there and argue to try to convince them. Right. Now, I value relationships. Mm -hmm. I value friendship right, relationships. No, I know what you're saying. And I value all types of relationships. Yeah. If a conversation is in, in this space can be had... I will give my 100% attention and effort to explain and to elaborate and to have a conversation about that. That's very profound, babe, because I really think a lot of things come in there. You, you and not to and I'm not saying like you say you're being rebellious or like you're not you're like you're insensitive about others' opinion or like their feelings. Um I'm t I I think you're speaking about you and yourself, your your self-worth, your mental health is important. So you don't allow things to bother you as much as they used to and you're not going to go out of your way to convince others to see something that maybe they will or maybe they won't right it's just a matter of opinion and it right. can just be respected that's good that's really good and and again most most conflicts rise from misunderstandings even 100%. in marriage even in marriages right in marriage is the way we communicate the way we say things we mean one thing and then, but the other person is taking it in another way. I strongly believe that there is like those different levels in marriage where you have those disagreements and you have those different opinions, but then you, you do have that part where you're truly not understanding each other from both sides. Right. And it's done in a genuine way. The person is completely lost. And you're really not speaking the same language. Hey, but in those situations, it's very wise to seek help. Yes. Because we're oftentimes, we just have one, one point of view or one, um, one, one, uh, yeah, it's, it's a one direction mm -hmm. and the other person has that one point of view as well. When you bring a third party in, 
you're able to see other perspectives. There you go. The word perspective, that's what I was looking for. I think that... I think that perspective will help... Helps clear a lot of misunderstandings. Getting different perspectives does help, but I think it's so important to just have those conversations where you can come together as a couple and hear each other out. Not to defend, not to justify, or give an explanation, but learn. To, it's like you're learning a language. In this case, you're learning the other person. Okay, I'm like, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to really just try to focus my attention on what they're saying, not so much on how can I fix it, or to my defense, this is why I did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you genuinely can come together as a couple and just hear each other out, um, as marriage coaches, we do this a lot. And it comes back to the whole active listening. I think that would be a start because I'm a big believer that you shouldn't, you don't need a third party. Yes, perspective will, they will get perspective, but I think we're capable of, and it's when you're not capable of it, some couples can do it, honey. Then you need to seek help because otherwise you're going to keep going down or you're going to go down eventually. I think that the third party help comes in when you are no longer communicating or you're stuck in the same circle, in the same problem. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be that you're struggling throughout your whole marriage. It may be just one aspect of your relationship that you're struggling with. Communication and like, it's everything. (laughs) And that you need some help, you know, in that area. I mean, I'd rather have that then throw an entire relationship away. When you said third party, you know, we have to emphasize who is that third party, right? We, we, and it has to be a coach. It has to be a professional yeah, that's what I was counselor. Say, because not everybody be can give advice. And, and we're, I'm not even talking Healthy about advice. advice. This is not even about advice. Guidance. I don't think counselors and coaches, they don't give advice. We don't give advice. That's true. We give guidance, tools. give you the tools to, you know, help you. For you to solve those to issues use. that you're mm-hmm. having, yeah. But honestly, you know, I think women primarily are the problem in marriages. You know, it's difficult to deal with you ladies. You know, and I think you just said it yourself, like communication, right? Like, for example, you just said something that I think what you meant to say was um, men are the biggest factor and why um A lot of couples cannot seem to understand each other, especially when it comes to the man to the woman. So I to clarify, um, friends um, that are listening, uh, what my husband is trying to say, um, this is why we're happily married still. I'm totally not pinching him right now under his armpit. (laughs) But I think that the solution to most marriages is just travel. I would say sex, but okay, honey, I'll agree. (laughs) I'm just trying to keep it real. I promise you, I keep it real. Hey, did you know that a man and a woman can be, can be friends without having sexual relationships? Do you know what those relationships are called? No. They're called marriage. I'm so confused. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're like trying to get into it. Like, I'm like, wait, what do you, what? I'm confused. There is, a, there is a statistic about how, like, a huge amount of so marriages are sexless marriages. Really? Did you know that? No. Yeah. It's a crazy amount. Oh, wow. So, wait. So, you're saying, so you're saying they, they love each other. They're married, right? Wow. This I, is, I don't know if they love each other. It, it doesn't seem that they love each other very no, much. No, because I could argue with you that people can be married and not have sex and love each other. Mm, marriage really look 15 to 20 percent of married couples report being in a sexless marriage wow so is it like the older you get the the less sex not necessarily i don't think so like once you hit 40s like it stops (laughs) (laughs) i hear that it actually goes up the sex drive for a woman i asked a friend of mine the other day i was like I mean, he's like 65 years old. Oh, my goodness. And, you know and you I was didn't. like, hey, man, so until when can you, you know? <laughs> until, <laughs> Honey, until you until, want to stop because. So I, sure I had told them, I was like, hey, I heard that you can only make it, you know, to like 60. And then I said, until 
until how old can a man be, you know, for that you're able to perform? Mm -hmm. And he said, until I die. <laughs> Check it out. A man was made for it. Factors contribute to sexless marriage include stress, medical issues, mental health struggle, ah, mental health struggles, low libido or sexual desire mismatch, lack of emotional connection, and relationship conflict. Wow, I don't think people talk about this. The reality is that people can be in a marriage and and not have sex. Because I was going to argue like, oh, that's not a marriage. I mean, that can be a marriage, right? Like if you have love, like sex is not everything. It doesn't right. define it. But but I think it's a big part of marriage. And oh, it's, and man. It, it's, it's what bonds it's, you, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. In a physical way. Uh, an emotional, but it brings spiritual you, yes. way, in every kind it of way. It makes you one. So, so it does take a lot for me. So look, 55% of sexless marriages are dominated by medical issues. Which sounds about fair. But check this out. 75% of sexless marriages cases have at least one partner who is unhappy with their sex life. So the majority of them, at least one person is not happy with it. See, that's a tricky one because why is it? Why can't you just tell them what you want and you're good? I mean, I think that once you lose that connection, once you're having too much problems, you know, you're you're married, you 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 married for the wrong reasons, and your marriage has been like a very bad one. Yeah, unfortunately, there's just so there many factors. There is no more connection there, right? Yeah. Forty-seven percent of respondents to a study reported that their sexless marriages include both partners having a lack of sexual desire. So you get to a point mm -hmm. where you don't even, you like both of you or like half of them, they don't want it anymore. Man, that's so sad. Right? That's so sad. I wonder if they both, because you know how, you know, especially with um, maybe, maybe not younger generation, maybe more older generation. As, as you have like, like kids is a big one, right? You hear a lot of people like, they think that a lot of people make it sound like when you have kids, you don't have. Sex. I'm gonna keep it real, but but isn't it interesting to think? Um, usually, you know, when one partner wants and the other one, that builds conflict, right? But what you just said, I never thought of it. What about when the two are on the same page? Mm -hmm. Does that make the marriage work? And then you're good. If the both are on the same page, then it works. What do you mean? That like, if both are not wanting sex, then they're they're good. But here's the thing, though. Like sexual sex, would it be a problem? Sex is a gift, right? But you're saying that these individuals don't desire it. But why is it that they don't decide? Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, I didn't get into that just, but I was just saying that can their marriage work if they're both on the same as far as not wanting it? That takes a many, like a factor from, okay, looks like these guys can make it through. Now, why? That's a deeper question. Can their marriage work without sex? I think. Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you like what the world would probably want to say, but in my opinion, that sounds like a very sad so look, marriage. one third of divorces are caused by sexless marriages. One third? <laughs> That's the amount of angels that fell. <laughs> I'm just trying to get visual. <laughs> okay, honey, back what to it. What does angels have to do with okay, this? Okay, let's edit that part. <laughs> one third... Around 61% of married therapists report seeing an increase in the occurrence of sexless marriages, meaning that that's huge. Like a handful of those marriages went to a therapist for help and more than half of those sexless marriages got back to having sex because of therapy. Wow. So it goes back to your original question. That's, that's interesting, right? Yeah. So should we go to a therapy? <laughs> he just exposed us. Boom. <laughs> yeah, guys, pray for us. Let's pray first, honey, and then we'll talk about therapists. 80% of married couples in a sexless marriage report feeling a lack of emotional closeness. And that's what I think the core of it all is. Mm. Emotional If I'm not emotionally attached, I'm not going to desire to be 
physically close and physically you know attached. and you hear this so much i'm so glad you said this because and no i mean i don't mean this with, with any offense but honey men if men could understand this concept what you just said is so powerful when you I, I, it's not about who comes first like you hear a lot of people like you do this and you do that and it's like you want things but then you want the other person so no one takes that initiative right like someone has to give in but it's not even about who comes first or who does what. But if men could meet, and even I'll even say woman, vice versa, just each other's emotional needs, even though the man, they always make make it sound like he's more physical. I'm sorry, but there are so many women out there that are so physical. You know what I mean? True. And the man is a lot more emotional. But this like idea out there is that men are like, more physical and the woman are emotional. I'm sorry, I disagree with that. You'd be surprised on the percentage on that. But when you put that together and you feed that emotional gap, oh my goodness, you have everything else. You just said it. Like the emotional is first and then it fills everything else and everything else flows from mm. there. And you know, it's so beautiful because look, what is uh, sex without emotion? Meaningless sex. Right. You are just that eventually will worn out, or right. or like you said, um, in their marriage. No, what did you say? In their marriage, they they become they get they get to the point where they're where they're sexual. they don't even want it. Yeah, both of them because, because they're not emotionally they're not attached. Connected. They're not connected. And you know, you know, it's interesting because we love hugs, we love affection, right? I mean, to a certain extent, I'm saying in general as people. Um, but I mean, I I love hugs, right? But at the same time. You cannot, um, I, I don't think you can connect physically if you don't connect emotionally. True. Mm. Now, mm. you can have mm. 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 Uh, meaningless sex. What do they call it? Not a one night stand? But that's worth it. I don't think it's meaningless but sex. But don't go I there because that's, just, when, that's, not, that's non married couples. I don't think there's such thing as meaningless sex. Actually, and by that, I mean. You can have that in marriages. In marriages, yeah. But I don't think it's such it's it's can be labeled as meaningless. I okay. think it's more of like pleasure, oh. satisfying. There you go. Your 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 physical needs. But you know what? A lot of men and women will say meaningless because if it doesn't have emotional for them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. But there could be classified in different categories. And men too, you know. But eventually, if you don't have the emotional, so like I'll I'll say this. I think you can have meaningless sex, like you said. It's just more pleasurable, more desirable, right? Infatuation. Um, and still be good. But I think at one point you have to balance it out with emotional sex. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you were saying, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the end of the day, bottom line, I mean, the emotional part is so critical. Oh, yeah. Check it out. 20% of British marriages are considered to be sexless. British? Yeah, England. What's going on in England over there? Ooh. Check this out. In Japan, 47% of couples reported being in a sexless marriage is in 2016. Wow. We had to open up a therapy session. Wow, that. honey. I mean, we talk about this, but I feel like we like it's so, you know, we talk about it and it's so light, but really dwell on it. Like, I don't even care you said 1%. You know what I mean? It's a lot. It's a huge number. No, the fact is a lot. Yeah. The idea is sad. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are and I don't care what you think. I don't even care what religion you're in. Like, that's that's hard to understand and wrap my mind around. So, but. Because what, one what thing does that meaningless mean? Meaningless mean like they're never. Not meaningless. Active, sorry. Sexless. Sexless, sorry. What, what does that mean? That they never have it? And it could be like five years or not? I think there is um, like you have it like maybe once a year or once every few months or something like that no way there's no way honey my mind can't comprehend hey that. but i really like this statistic around 60 percent of married therapists report seeing an increase in the occurrence of sexless marriages meaning oh that it's they've been seeing an increase they've been seeing an increase i had understand that as like they went to therapy and they got better in their... In, no, no, they're just seeing an increase life. that's happening more and more. Right. Sorry, I misunderstood that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let's let's turn it around a little bit. But, uh -huh. but, I think it does help. Oh, no, no. Yeah, when you were talking about the third-person perspective, I definitely would say the therapist, the counselor, seek that professional help. 
And then, of course, you always... No, honestly, I think when you mentioned the third part, I want to be very clear with our friends, whoever's listening. If you have problems, and, and it doesn't have to be about sex, but if you're having a hard time in your marriage, seek professional help. Because at the end of the day, listen, whether you grew up in a home that's very conservative or not, if it's a taboo or, oh my goodness, we don't do that, or, oh, that means what? It's going to put you on a, everybody needs counseling, therapy. You know what I'm saying? People need to understand that it's not a taboo. It's not out of this world. It is completely normal, completely healthy. And listen, if we complete, if we continue to be ignorant to this stuff, you're just putting the problem and and digging it deeper and deeper. That's true. And the reality is, do you want to be happy? Do what's best for you and stop listening to the world. I mean, yeah, that's right. And you and I, we do some marriage coaching. Yes, we do. If there are any of our listeners. It's my favorite thing, by the way, to do. With we me. do really enjoy that. Okay, so not my favorite, favorite, but you know what I mean, honey. We do uh, marriage coaching. If any we of our do. listeners or viewers are interested in going through a session with us, you mm -hmm. may reach out and we'll be more than happy to help. Check out the link and our Insta. Send us a DM. Yeah. And uh, we'll try to help you out. Oh, absolutely. I think... Um, I think we, we speak out of experience, but the best part about this is we give you guys the tools that we believe will prepare and enrich you to the best of your ability. No marriage is perfect, but marriage is fun. That's right. And travel. And travel. Travel as Spend much. all your money. Ah, look at that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're already starting wrong. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Talk about traveling. Mm -hmm. There's this couple. In airplane, and then this woman and the pilot. Sorry, the pilot announces that they're going down. Mm -hmm. They're gonna crash. Mm -hmm. You following me? Paying attention? Yeah, I'm just terrified. You listening? Mm -hmm. So they're about to crash. The woman says to the man, "Hey, make me feel like a woman one more time." So he embraces her for impact. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace for impact. So you know what he did? Mm. He ripped his shirt apart and said, here, go iron this one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our cue. We will see you on the next podcast. It is definitely bedtime for my husband. He is hallucinating at this point. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good talk tonight. See you next episode or hear you next episode. We'd love to hear about you. Comment. Be blessed. Peace. Have a great day. Have a good night.